Um, it is the Ron and Fez show. We got Fezzy uh, on board with us, and he's in here. And I just want to say, I know that the last couple of days have been uh, incredibly stressful for Fez, more stressful than than you guys at home have ever known. And it's uh, well, it's been wildness, but I want to thank the management here at uh, Sirius XM. Tim, of course, Don Wiki Wicklin, Johnny Mac, everybody has been trying to figure out what's the best for everybody. But there's Fez. How you doing, pal? I'm doing okay. So um, here, I guess I'm just going to jump into this. Uh, Fez Watley... And I have uh, been discussing this with the management, and we are going to leave the ONA channel. Both of us are leaving the ONA channel. And this is the only home that we've ever had on satellite radio. And I never really get around to talking about this kind of stuff uh, on the air, but being with, with ONA has just been great. And I know for you, feel the same way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I heard earlier when I was down the hall the Golden Ticket talk, and just an amazing. Well, that time. was that was uh, a phenomenal thing uh, to be able to have the chance after being with ONA in New York to um, know that we were going to come on and do satellite radio with them. I, I'm just going to take a couple minutes to talk about these guys because you already know uh, how good they are. They're the best. But sometimes it's tough when you listen to a show to just know how tough it is to do the kind of show that they've done for as long as it's done. These guys are amazing performers. And um, I remember when we were coming into New York City, uh, Fez and I got this call from Jeremy Coleman that we were uh, going to come up and work with him at this radio station in New York that had flipped to talk, and I'm like, N.E.W., oh, this is a classic rock, it's a classic rock call letters, how are people t taking this? Uh, Jeremy was like, oh, it's going to go great, we've got great people, come on on, this is going to be terrific. Um, so I tell Fez, we're, you know, we're going uh, to New York, he's, you know, what? New York? I mean, we couldn't have been leaving a smaller market going to the biggest market that there is in radio. So I'm going, this is going to be great. I talked to Jeremy. It's going to be fantastic. After that, I started to hear from some people, watch out for ONA. They, they're the biggest pricks. They rip all the other people. And I'm like, good. You know, I'm a veteran of the radio wars. I've been around. Uh, at that point, you know, you come out of the shock jock thing. You're always thinking you're, you know, you're the best that there is. Everybody is an asshole at that point. And I remember picking Fez up at the airport. I think it was Philly or Baltimore. So I pick him up and then we were going to drive up to New York. And we were listening to the radio once we got in Jersey when the ONA show comes on. And I'm like saying to Fez, oh, these are those fucking guys we're probably going to have to drop them on their ass first week, right? So we start to listen to the show, expecting, like, in the rest of our career to hear lightweights, you know what I mean? There's always somebody out there that thinks that they're good, and then you knock them down. So we start to listen to the show, and, like, well, we're, like, giggling, and then we're fucking laughing along, and then we're just looking at each other going, holy shit. How are they doing this shit? You know what I mean? How are they doing this on the air? Whoops. They were so damn funny. And uh, we pulled into New York City. Uh, I met Opie. You know, they're doing that. Who, who's the gay show on at night? And it was the most fun. Uh, Ant would drop in and do the show. Opie would drop in and do the show. We started doing Afro shows together. We'd come in and do that. That place was such a pirate ship, and it was so goddamn great. And for people to not 
understand how that thing stayed up as long as it did is to not understand radio. A very, very big part of that is Opie's incredible brilliance at radio. It's one of the hardest things to do is broadcasting. And the weird thing always from the outside, it seems like the easiest part of the whole game. And uh, to be the guy who found Anthony and knew that that would work on the air, to find Jim Norton and somehow get him to join a show, even though he's this terrific comedian, to being people like Bill Burr, Patrice, Louis C.K., uh, Jay Moore. I mean, that list goes on and on. I, I don't even want to start and bring it up because you just don't know how tough it is to convince those people to come in and, and join that illusion and be part of it is really, really fantastic. And it's some of the best radio that you'll ever hear. And when you listen to it on a regular basis, you really don't understand that the amount of uh, magic that that takes. But to go over the, the, the list that I'm talking about, obviously, Opie, besides being hysterical himself and a great broadcaster, has this ear to bring people into his universe at the right time because these guys are just building up and then ready to pop. And quite frankly, he did that with Anthony when, you know, Anthony shouldn't have gotten a break on a radio station like that at the time. But somehow Op was able to look into that and see when somebody is ready to, to ripen and then be able to help move them along. It's, it's a tough thing to do. Op is definitely the... Well, he's the best programmer in the country. But beyond that, comedically, he's probably got a better ear and eye than Judd Apatow. I have no problem in the world measuring the guys that have come through the ONA show with the guys who have come through the movie business in L.A. Um, Anthony is the funniest human being, and it pains me to say this because it's the only guy in my life that, I love to get a laugh from it. Uh, it almost embarrasses me to say how much it feels good to get a laugh from that guy because I know how goddamn funny he is. Jim Norton is probably the finest comedian of his generation. And for him to do radio, it's really you guys don't get it. It's like if there was a certain time that Kennison or uh, Bill Hicks would also be doing a radio show. That show is just fucking fantastic. Those guys are fucking cream. That's Clapton, Bruce, Baker. They're fucking cream. So to have this opportunity to fly under that flag has been one of the greatest. Um, just uh, and we never even got a chance when we first came to WNEW to hate the guys. They were so welcoming and so much fun. And I remember I ch uh, actually challenged Anthony to a fight that first week as long as we did it naked. It was funny stuff. It was really, really uh, great stuff. So, again, completely thanks to the, those guys to been a part of the ONA show has been tremendous. Um, and I, I brought this up before to go in and play with those guys. It's like playing with the Lakers. I remember, I will never forget this experience. This is probably my greatest show business experience. Uh, Opie says, oh, Ant's not doing the uh, show on Friday. He's going to be off uh, taking a cruise or something. You want to come in and hang out? I'm like, fuck yeah. This is great. I set the alarm. I come in. I come into the room. And Jim Norton and Jay Moore are already sitting there. And so, you know, I grab a mic. This is going to be great. And then the door opens, and it's Louis C.K. and Ricky Gervais. And I'm looking around this room. Opie, Jay Moore, Jim Norton, Louis C.K., Ricky Gervais. And I fucking say to myself, 
I'm sitting in the funniest room in the known universe right now. If any other room wants to fucking challenge this room, let's do it. And I might be the weakest link here, but I'm in the fucking room, motherfuckers. Uh, it was seriously just some of the greatest experiences I've uh, ever had. And I couldn't thank those guys enough. Now, uh, Fez and I have been going through our own stuff. We've gone back and forth with the company. It's been really weird. Um, Fez, I guess we should make the announcement first before we get into any of the details. But Fez and I are going to move over to the XM side, and we're going to be on Raw Dog Comedy Hits 99, and we'll be starting that show January 6, 2014. This is a show that... I've kind of been wanting to do since I put Unmasked uh, together where we go out of our way to work with the funniest people that we can possibly find. Um, one of the plans is take the show on the road, do some stuff from around the country, uh, hear from people from around the country. You guys, our listeners here, are going to help us Put this show together. Still can listen to ONA in the morning or at night or in the afternoon or even probably at this time. I have no idea what they plan on doing with um, this slot here. But when you're done listening to the best show on radio, we'll be here in the afternoons. It's just a couple of clicks down. Sirius XM, Comedy Hits 99. Uh, they're giving us a chance to uh, start and do a lot more specials out of there. Um, I was thinking last night that we should have been watching that train wreck that NBC was doing, The Sound of Music, the high school version. We should have just been on the air busting balls doing a snark session about that. It's something that we wanted to do for a long time. Uh, we have so much fun doing Unmasked, so much fun doing um, the Twitter contest and stuff. That the, the promise here is we're going to do a fast-paced, great show, going out finding young comedy guys, established comedy guys, bringing everybody together. Yesterday's show of having Susie Espin and Tom Rhodes in here was amazing. Um, so you know that Fez and I have been going through this stuff, and for a while, this was something that I was, there was a very good possibility that that this would be done differently than when we were doing it. The Fez was not going to be making this move, but it's something that you've wanted to do very much. Very much, and thank you to everyone down the hall and management for helping me through this, and especially this past couple of weeks. Um, so what what's going to happen with me is I am rededicating myself. I'm not going to burden people anymore with the sad shows, with the with the anger, with the anxiety shows. It's I've worked out a situation with management, and this is the first time that this has ever happened in my career uh, for the first time my contract and Ron's contract do not run concurrently my deal now will be up in April and April of next year and I've talked to Tim Sabian and the other guys down the hall and talked about how I'm going to make these changes, rededicate myself. I'm going to start bringing back my characters. The Fesitorial will be back on the new show. And what will happen is next April, I will get evaluated then. This coming April. This coming April of next year. I will get reevaluated then. And in four months, when, that's when management will make their decision with me. But I'm confident. I'm going to win at this. I'm bound and determined to make this work and to be in the perfect position of April 2014. 
Um, again, if you want to know Fez's insanity, nobody ever give, would give up a guaranteed deal for a four-month deal. Uh, and Fez has brought this up before that he didn't have to do this. He offered it because he feels like he want to he wants to be part of this. Again, could a lawyer say obviously he was crazy when he did that? I would have to swear yes. I mean, I couldn't walk in any court of law and not say that. But Fezzi, this is something you really want to do and you really want to put some of the sadness and anger and shit behind you. Totally behind me. And that's why I went ahead and reworked my own deal that it could be done in four months because I want to prove that I'm going to do this. I'm determined to do it. I, I mean, I honestly never realized how close I was to losing the show that I absolutely love. And it's a situation of staring into the abyss, realizing <laughs> what you want, and coming to terms with people like Tim Sabian, uh, Wiki, and Johnny Mac, and being able to work this out. And I thank them so much for taking the time, especially after the past few days, to get this done with me. So... Here's the fun part of this, um, and we've never had this opportunity before, uh, but we're going to go over to uh, Raw Dog, which, by the way, the name just drives me nuts. What's the official name? Is Raw Dog Serious XM Comedy Hits? Ra 99. Yeah, that very long name is the official name. All right, first thing I got to do is get to work on that. Um, but the beautiful thing about this is we've already been talking with the booking department, and we're really trying to put together shows that are incredibly interactive with you guys, who are the best callers, the best tweeters, the best commenters on the air. Talked with the iBang people. We're going to start and push things more in a comedy direction there. So if you want to be involved in the future of that, we're going to start and take some volunteers of stuff to do. This is the show that just a couple weeks ago we did the funny boner bit and trend it worldwide, number one. So let's shake it up a little bit. Let's come into work every day going on our, our way to, to have fun. And I promise you we're going to find the funniest people that we possibly can. Hopefully a bunch of people that you have never even heard of yet. Um, and some, and this is kind of interesting because I don't know how this works out. But I guess there's people on the XM side that can't, or the, the serious side, that can't listen to the XM side. Right, yeah. It's still set up in that Do position. XM people listen to both sides? Well, there's XM pe No, it works both ways. There's some people who had the XM originally that still aren't getting serious channels and vice versa. Okay. So we're actually going to get people who have never heard us before we have no idea of who Janice from Chicago is so we're definitely going to need you guys to get involved as we push this off to start to program these people that are listening on how to listen to this show how to get involved with the show and the cool thing also is I guess some of these guys if we get ONA to swing by and do the show don't get to hear ONA in the morning is that how it works out yeah, that's I would like, happened too. Yeah. I would like to also get a job at the end of the hall where I could fix that. So I'm like, well, what, what does that even mean? And they're like, okay, there's like 10 million people who don't get on this side of it. Right. That, that the ONA channel isn't available to them. I don't even begin to comprehend that one. That's just damn strange. Um, so Raw Dog, Sirius XM, Comedy Hits. 99. This is once again the Ron and Fez show uh, reinventing themselves. Fez taking this chance with his own livelihood to say that he wants to be part of this to make it work. Bringing back the characters. Now, uh, I'm already saying in my emails what about uh, Chris Stanley? Yes, Chris Stanley We'll be, I don't know why you're typing, and I asked you not to, but Chris Stanley will be with us as well. Now, the show will still 
stay on here for the next month. We're going to be on the ONA channel for the next month. And we're doing something that you don't get to do in terrestrial radio when you change a radio station. That is, tell your listeners how to get there and how to follow you along. Because obviously it doesn't hurt the ONA channel because you can hear ONA anytime that you want to. Um, so everybody thinks it's a great idea of, of, yeah, just keep promoting. But I want to do more than promote with you guys. I want to build the new show with you. And we're going to figure out what Fez lo- is the best stuff that Fez does on the air, what Chris does on the air, who else to bring in with us, what comics you guys would love to have come in. Um Chris Stanley, you're already weirded out. Fez doesn't like change, but you've never been through a radio change in your life. Never. I'm born and bred on this channel. Let let me tell you what normally happens when you leave a radio station. You don't do a goodbye show. You're off the air. Uh, Then six months later, you pop up somewhere else um, telling people to call your listeners and bitching about the old management and how shitty they treated you at the other radio station and promising to bury them. Um, it's This is the exact opposite way that you go from one station to another where you get to sit around and say, here's what we're going to be doing um, and here's how, you know, Here's what we'll be doing and and maybe throw things out. I definitely think that the Fez meltdown thing has to uh, fit somewhere. The Mrs. Fields thing can't go on. Um, no, that was one of the things that was discussed. I want to just replay that because that kind of weirdness has never happened before. But I think this is going to end up uh, being the funnest thing that we've done in some time. We've actually, you know, one of the things that had me bummed out is I think that we let ourselves get a little stale and we're just letting ourselves drift along on the fact that we're on this great channel now and, you know, you just do your four hours. So it gives us a chance to to jump back into some stuff. But Chris Stanley, this is going to be interesting for you because you've never made this kind of change before. And I want you to know something. Yeah. As many times that management said to me, you can get a new and better producer. What? A million times better. I said to them, I don't want better. I want uh-huh with me. I want somebody who agrees with everything that I say. Do they say that a lot? That they want to... Don't even focus on that. That's Your thing focus gonna... is this. Take those rosy red lips of yours. What? Attach them to my ass. No, no thanks. And we hit it. Yeah. Me and uh uh-uh, uh, once again, doing that thing. Yeah. So uh, the next few weeks, again, stop being confused. We're not going to be off the air for a month. We're still going to be here on the ONA channel until January 6th. Obviously, we didn't want to make this move before the holidays. Hopefully, a bunch of people will get new cars with new radios in them. <laughs> And it'll work out for everybody. But this is going to be uh, great. Fez Watley, you're a wild man. You're a lunatic. There's no way you're going to be able to pull this off. You're going to fall backwards. You're going to break down. I have till April. Yes, you do have to April. Do you know what date in April? Uh, yeah. 15th? No. It would be great if it also was your taxes. Early April. Okay. The 6th. All right, so April the 6th, which really only gives you three solid months. Yeah, true. The rest of this one and everything in 14. Now, do those three men decide? Yeah, yeah. Then I will go back down the hallway. I don't intend to go back down there until then, (laughs) but I will go back down the hallway and sit with Wiki and Tim and Johnny Mac, and we'll discuss this. Well, good. Good. So uh, those people, Wiki in particular, who has been very, very kind, said that he is going to take over Team Fez and that Ronnie B can just go back to worrying about what's on the radio. I'll believe it when I see it, but here's where we are. 
Is it just Wiki? Does he have a team? Well, he calls it Team Wiki, but <laughs> I think he means his genitals as well. Weird. You know, like... Um, we'll see how it works out. I'm open to anything. Like he said to a woman one night, you're going to be playing a home game <laughs> against Team Wiki. <laughs> and he just pointed at his crutch. So uh, we're very excited about this. We want to get new games, new imaging, uh, more and more ways for the listeners to get involved. Um, if you're going to do this, and I was talking about this when I said I was sick and tired, I don't want to come to work and not have fun anymore. I don't want to do it. And the last time, the, you know, I had a great time yesterday uh, hanging out with Susie and Rhodes. I had a great time the last time I did the ONA show. That show felt like it was over in five seconds. You know, uh, it, that's where I want to get back to with having uh, fun again. Now, the interesting thing is we will also, if we get the idea for some specials, we're going to run them at night. We'll put together some stuff that uh, hopefully no one has ever done in the radio before. And I think it's going to be really, really entertaining. Um, so that's it. The Ron and Fez show moving um, to Raw Dog, Sirius XM, Comedy Hits, 99. Um, that happens over the in a month from today. A month from today. But it's going to be, uh, it's going to be different. But we've done that before, you know. We've done the run, and, uh, run, and run show. We did run and Fez. We did run and Fez dot com. We did the fastest hour in radio. For me, always the most fun that you can have is changing the format and trying to figure out new ways to do this. If you're not get, uh, busy getting born, you're busy dying. That's Mr. Robert Zimmerman talking about that. And I also need to say something, again, actually from my heart. And it's not just to the listeners, but it's to you guys itself. And I, I've, never, I've never broken down before, but I... <coughs> I hope I can get through this. There's a, <coughs> excuse me, there is a statement in philosophy, and it works, <coughs> smoke in here. <coughs> oh my God. It's a nature boy! Listen up! This is the nature boy! is set, the time draws near, and the moment, my friend, is at hand. Woo! 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 Start lining up now, ladies, because on January 6, 2014, starting at high noon, woo! 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 Space Mountain is open again for business! Woo! 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 The greatest entertainment spectacular of all time comes to Sirius XM Comedy Hits 99 as we walk that aisle one more time! Woo! Woo! This is a new era, and guess what? The horsemen ride again! Woo! 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 Because now, it's time to go to school on Raw Dog. We're gonna have the cream of the crop, the blue chippers, the Dom Perignon of comedy, top shelf, all the way, my friends! We are custom made from head to toe! Tommy Hilfiger calls us up and asks, what should I wear? LeBron James calls us up and says, how do you possibly perform at that level? And Miss Heidi Klum simply calls up every night and I can tell it's her because I can hear the desire in her whimpering. Woo! 
because it's all happening now with Ron and Fez and the Nature Boy! And, on a personal note, Tommy Rhodes, you came in here yesterday, and I'll give the devil his due. You took your best shot, but guess what? It wasn't good enough, was it? Because to be the man, you've got to beat the man! Woo! Woo! And compared to the nature boy, Tommy, you come up just a little bit short. But then every man walking the planet comes up short when compared to the nature boy! Woo! 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 I'm here to break the bad news to you, Rhodes. You're not a horseman. Get out of this business. You're not even Dusty Rhodes. Your dream dies today. It's not your fault because you came up against the dirtiest player in the game. Woo! Woo! Diamonds are forever, and so is the Rod and Fest show. Who are we? We're the badass Rod Bennington. Woo! 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 We're the Road Dog Fest. Scratch that. Make that. The Raw Dog, Fez Murray Watley! And I am, by the grace of God's green earth itself, the living nature boy! Woo! And remember this, we are the limousine riding, Learjet flying, kiss stealing, wheeling dealing, sons of a gun! And you may not like it, but starting January 6th, in the year of our good Lord 2014, on Raw Dog Serious XM Comedy Hits 99, you had better learn to what? Love it! Why? Bottom line, because we are the, the best thing going! Today! Woo! 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 It's the Nature Boy! Woo! The Nature Woo! Boy! Woo! Let's get some of the smoke out of here. Six six, Ron zero Fez, eight six six Ron zero Fez. Uh, oddly enough, I got a ton of people who wrote saying, "Are we going to keep the same telephone number?" Um, yeah, I think it'd be a grand idea. Keep the same telephone number. What do you think? Uh huh. I think eight six six Ron zero Fez is a great. Phone I just number. want you to answer. Uh mm huh. -hmm. That would be the best. I know. Um, I got this uh, sent to me from Opie. Uh, text me this. Jesus, Ron, if you ever need someone to help you rob a bank, I'm there. Congrats to you and Fez. It's a great move. And I see us doing more radio together. That would be fantastic for me. The opportunity to go in there and just hang out with those guys is um, uh, the funnest. Look who it is, as always. Hard drag Johnny. Hey, Johnny. Johnny, we got you, pal? Yeah, sorry. The greatest announcement I've ever heard. Well, Johnny, it's not like you to be somebody who, uh, to be able to be there for us. You've <laughs> never done that in the past. I know. It's bad. And you got the Nate back. Uh, that was, I mean, literal chills running through my body now, as I heard. He, here's what I'm... Uh, Fez, you said you're going to bring the characters back and yes. all. Yes. Nature Boy is back on the show. Nature Boy's right back there, yes. Um, the stents can handle the Nature Boy? 
Well, I'll probably know by the end of this show, right? Now, right. That, I, I think one fell out and dropped in my shoe at one point. Can I just help you here a little bit? Mm -hmm. Cut 11 minutes out of that bit, and maybe it wouldn't have been so difficult on your heart. To reiterate! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah. boy, now I'm getting a little nervous for him. <laughs> um, uh, all right, Johnny, so we'll definitely be talking to you. Uh, one of the cool things is that the plan is to take the show to a lot more places here in New York and around the country and do stuff, and we haven't had the opportunity to do that in a lot of years, and it's... Yeah. Really looking forward to it. I would love I think to there to is smoke in here. Home. I, would, I would absolutely love to give you guys a home here for some stuff. Oh, God, of course we know that, Johnny, but you're so busy with Eddie Trunk right now. No, Eddie's out. I haven't talked to him in weeks. He's, he's over. It's By fun. the way, tying in with this, I'm trying to do a comedy and metal show. With Eddie Trunk over there. And my plan right now, because so many of the, I mean, Eddie's got two great comedians on his show already. And I want to call it Trunk Full of Comedy. And it's just like, <laughs> we open the trunk and another comedian comes walking out of there. That's a great idea. Yeah. I hope, it, I hope it works out. Even better name. All right. Thank you, Johnny. All right, boys. See ya. Peace. Coming up in just about... An hour, ma'am, it was 45 minutes. The Bobby Moynihan on Mass. You're going to enjoy this one. Um, Bobby Moynihan on Mass. He's uh, hysterical. Uh, when I get a chance, though, I do want to listen to the Mrs. Fields thing uh, and put together a quick contest on that. Um, Dustin in Texas, you're on the Run of Fez show. Holy shit, man. That was amazing. It came out of nowhere. When Fez broke into uh, Nature Boy there, I got fucking goosebumps, man. Fez, I've been listening for about five or six years now. I haven't exactly been your biggest fan. But as a listener, I'm going to wipe the slate clean. I'm looking forward to your your guys' new project. And uh, you just keep bringing shit like that, buddy. Well, thank you, Dustin. That gives me goosebumps. Uh, Jeff and Mass, you're on the Run of Fez show. Whoops, let me try again. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, buddy, how are you? Yeah. It makes my heart glad you're going to try better, and I hope the best for you. But um, you were, wanted to take suggestions for some new comedians. Well, there's a podcast called The Crabsies with Ryan Sickler and Jay Larson, and they're just middle-class storytelling, hilarious. They got one of the hottest podcasts. Maybe you can uh, set something up with them. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to listen to um, a ton of those kind of podcasts and look for some of the... Uh, up and coming guys as well as the uh, established guys. We want to do something um, what we've been talking about um, as we set this up and really we got a month to do it over at Raw Dog Sirius XM Comedy Hits 99 the station with a really long name but, but to kind of figure out uh, how to help even some of those guys promote themselves. Our feeling is if it's comedy, we want it to run through uh, the station now. Anywhere that there's comedy <laughs> at all, uh, you know, we want to be talking to road comedians or on the, uh, while they're out on the road and just really just give a focus to fun. Just start to get back and having a good time again. Um, John, you're on the Ronnie Fez show. Hey, how's it going, Ronnie? Good. Great news today. I'm, I was, I'm very happy to hear it. Uh, one quick question. I think you mentioned something when you said something about the sound of music. Are you going to do big-ass simulcast again? Uh, that is definitely a plan if we can find the right projects and we can get it past legal. Because the last time we did something with the Super Bowl, we couldn't pull it off. Also, there's a weirdness of how long everything goes. So technically, we've got to sit down with the engineers and figure out how people can get their TV on the same feed, but really everybody has a TV or, uh, or some kind of, uh, a TiVo or some kind of DVR. So maybe we'll work it out. Um, but we're talking about doing some round tables, uh, specials, um, maybe even stand up specials, uh, game show specials, um, having a, uh, a ball with it. 
Um, let's go over here to uh, Francis in Long Island. You're on the Run Fed show. Hey, buddies. I woke up this morning with a knot in my stomach, and now I'm just jubilant. Thank you so much for that amazing news. Well, it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. Um, and part of the exciting part for me was getting that text from Hope just hearing that we're still going to be doing, you know, some radio together, too. I mean, I think it would be really fun to to bring the ONA guys and basically do an ONA show on that side of the platform, even though I sit here and tell you I don't know how the platforms work. Matter of fact, I wasn't even sure I knew there was a platform to just the other day. I have a tendency to not pay attention to any kind of meetings at work. Uh, but Johnny Mac is going to have to explain to me how that all uh, works out. Here's our buddy Ezra. Ezra, you're on the Running Face Show. Hey, buddies. Yeah. Um, little to say, I, I, I'm shocked and stunned. Uh, I'm still trying to, whatever. Wait, are you going to be in charge of the channel? Well, shows? this is actually going to be the kind of cornerstone show for that channel. So we're certainly going to be involved in... Uh, the kind of comedians that are coming through, the kind of comedians that they're picking for the channel, any other kind of programming. Um, and these guys have been a ball to work with and brainstorm with. So I think as we're doing this, they're going to relook at the format of uh, comedy that they have now. As you see this, comedy hits, uh, really looking for comedians to fit everything that we're doing. Uh, here's Randy in Sarasota. You're on the Run and Fez show. Oh, you know, it's really great to hear uh, Fez Marie get the shit back together here, guys. Uh, uh, I just want to compliment him on uh, taking it to the stratosphere. Yeah, taking it to the stratosphere and fly high. I want you guys getting down to Paul O's house, though. Why don't you get a week of shows in his fucking hellhole? See what's going on there. Raw dog in Paul O's house. Ooh, yeah. That might have been one of the, the poorer Macho Men, but I, I love Sad. Yeah, I love Macho so much. I'm glad to hear it. Um, here's Nate in Minnesota. You're on the Run of Fez show. Uh, hey, Ron. I was just wondering what kind of time slot are you going to be? Are you guys going to be early in the morning going up against the 1A? No. I don't want to get up that early. No, I certainly don't want to get up that early at all. And we've been actually kicking this around. And we're going to go, while we're trying to reboot this, and one of the things is to get our energy level back up to where we started, we're going to go back to our original three-hour tour from 12 to 3. Now, we also talked about if the show's kicking ass that, that at that time, we'll just stay on the air that day. If we got some great guests and everything's working out, we're going to stay on the air. Then around April, we'll take a look back after we figure out what Fez's long-term role in this is going to be. Figure out, do we want to, you know, do it as a four-hour show, but... And I'm going to leave this open to you guys talking, you know, tomorrow night. Maybe rather than ever doing a four-hour show, it would be cooler to do half-hour specials here and there, an hour special here and there, um, you know, coming up with some programming, shooting vines, shooting video, stuff that you guys can download. Um, stuff that we can tie in with the listeners. Maybe the whole format of you start at this time and you're off at this time is just dumb and terrestrial, and we won't work in that direction. So we're going to do some experimenting to see what works. But, and I'm going to say this again, and I'm totally serious, I don't want to do this without you guys being involved in it. I want to, I wanted to put together a show that we can all really have fun with again and that's the listeners playing a very very big part of this um coke logic how you doing buddy hey what's going on hey, i'm man. glad you guys are uh staying together this is great but um this week has kind of been like a, a wake-up call for fez but for you uh when did you decide or did you ever decide like that you're going to give him a last chance uh last night and a very big part of this is because there are people in this company that were very, very big fans 
of different variations of the Ron and Fez show. They feel like they bought the Ron and Fez brand, that it means something, that that chemistry means something, and they um, they want to take advantage of it. To be totally honest with you, they think that that's from their business, that makes more sense to them. And I I had also talked to people outside of this company about stuff to do. Uh, but Fez has been... Well, he's been actually, in my opinion, ridiculous because he's made a move that I certainly never would have fucking made. Um, I don't fucking, you know, I don't push cash in like that. So, yeah, let's do it. Let's have fun with it. Fez and I have been together. It's been over 20 years. And to not give it the shot, it, it almost would be ridiculous when you think about it. I mean, to do it out of spite or to do it out of my feelings were hurt here or I felt let down here, whatever, whatever that shit has to be with. I don't want to live my life that way. I want to be open to this. And I'm seriously going into this fuzzy thinking you want to have as much fun with this as I do. I totally just want to start having fun again. Mm. If I ha if I'm having a personal issue, that's what Wiki's for now. Off the air. Um. All right. Thanks. Fantastic. Uh. Thanks, Coke. Talk to you later, buddy. Um. Here's uh Jason in Rochester. You're on the Run Fest show. Hey, buddies. I'm so uh, happy right now for you guys. Um, I, I just wanted to bounce like a few quick ideas off you because I think that I could feel this going into more of a community sense of like what the show is going to be. Um, maybe like we could have like a sign up for the playlist and each day a, a listener gets to make their own playlist. And some days Chris Stanley can throw in a playlist. You can throw in a playlist. Well, I don't know um, whether we're ever going to do the playlist stuff. I know... Everything is going to be out on the table, but certainly I want to get into a thing where the listeners can start and write uh, show topics. When we bring people into uh, the show, I want to take it in as some kind of roundtable suggestions, and I want the listeners very much involved with that. There's stuff like boxes up on the iBang. I want the listeners very much involved with that. Um I certainly want us to to use more great people like Leslie and Kyle, and I want to figure out, you know, basically making the listeners as much a part of the show as ever uh, before. Um, Chris, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ron, Fab, Fez. Hey, uh, you still going to do RBR on the on the one H channel? Because I really like that show. I hope that don't go away. Oh, everything is up in the air right now. Um, there is a, a million different things that we're going to be discussing. Um, one of the things that are coming up is changing the way Chris Stanley dresses. Oh, I was thinking suit and tie. I don't. I don't own a suit or a tie. Then I got a great idea. Yeah, we get you a tie and a waiter's jacket. <laughs> now, hear me out. Yeah. You bring us food and beverages throughout the show. I'm I in. A producer, though. Do me a favor, too, Chris. Yeah. Don't be a waiter who writes stuff down that looks tacky. Memorize it. I was a waiter one day. I never wrote anything down. How'd it go? Brought everybody shots of tequila, no matter what they ordered. <laughs> Who's ready for shots? Hungry, and I though. felt like I had a fucking following at that place before I was fired. It's only a day. And this one old lady um, said she wanted a, some weird fucking cocktail. And I go, uh, squeeze me, fag juice. And I thought I would get a big laugh. Nothing. But, you know, you're only 13. You work in a bar. You're going to make some mistakes. Who hired you? You know, like I say, that's why they put er erasers on pencils, Fez. Sure. I didn't even know that was an alcoholic beverage. What's that? I guess. Yeah. I just wanted to test him with that to see if he would panic. He does it. He's the new, improved Fez. Um, Ethan, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ron. Uh, Hicks, Pepper. I uh, just does, was wondering if the show would still be uh, four hours on Raw Dog. 
No, we just answered, answered that a moment ago. We're going to go back to our original deal that we came in uh, with, which is noon to three, because we're looking at it for energy purposes. Then if we got it cranking and we have fun guests, uh, we'll run it a little later. Uh, then probably around April, we'll look back into to it to see whether we want to do four hours every day or if it works out better doing three hours and then different projects that we do stuff. I certainly would love to do stuff that tied in 24 hours a day. I was thinking about this today. If we could come up with contests that roll throughout the day and then you can only go back to winning. That's the kind of shit that I would like to get back into really having fun doing some stuff for the contest pigs. Um, but I, I just, I think that we could have a great time doing this. Um, here's uh Jim, Jim, you're on the manifest show. Yeah. I was wondering, are you guys going to still have, uh, you know, non comedians as guests? Uh, I- you know what? We're, we're still kicking that kind of stuff around. We really don't. We're not 100%. And here's what the promise is. On Monday, you start to put together this show with us. I'm, you know, if enough people go, oh, here's an element that we really want. I want to be open to it. Here's an element that we really hate. Uh, I want to be open to that as well. Hopefully we will keep the tiered filled live reads going. I want to just do something real quick here. Um, I want to hear the Mrs. Fields that Fez did. Since they're Mrs. Re- Fields herself offered to set up a shop in your kitchen, not to only make all the cookies and treats you could possibly imagine, but then also offered to wrap them up and carefully place them in amazing gift packages. Then hand deliver, uh, deliver them to all your friends, family, and clients. Would you be interested? Well, of course you would. Well, MrsFields.com essentially offers this exact same service. It's uh, with a few less amazing aromas filling your house, but still, you get the point. At MrsFields.com, you can shop the world's best cookies and treats, all baked to perfection, sealed fresh, and shipped directly to you or your gift recipients. Packaged in beautiful gift baskets or festive holiday tins and boxes, Mrs. Fields' gift is the perfect gift for anyone on your list. These gifts can also be personalized with a message, a logo, or even a photo. So visit MrsFields.com today and ship the world's best cookies and gifts. Enter code KITCHEN, that's code KITCHEN, at checkout and save 20% off your order. Again, that's the code word KITCHEN and save 20% from MrsFields.com or call 1-800-COOKIES, 1-800-COOKIES for more information. I think that guy is really moved by cookies. <laughs> um, it's a sentimental gift. That is hysterical. When I got it sent to me last night that Mrs. Fields was uh, tweeting, I want to get the exact line because this was hysterical, uh, but Mrs. Fields actually tweeted out, our products typically bring tears of joys, joy. Awkward. Hashtag Ron and Fez. Um, right away, let's do a Twitter contest. Send stuff over to Mrs. Fields, letting them know <laughs> how much you enjoyed that Fez commercial. Uh, and we've got uh, something cool for you uh, tweeters. It's the JFK Director's Cut, Blu-ray, 50th Anniversary Edition, signed by Oliver Stone. Holy this is shit. a beautiful D- uh, Blu-ray set. It's gigantic. It's awesome. This is what we planned on giving East Side Dave for Christmas. Because this is his favorite movie and his favorite director. So, uh, for kind of first responders, it's at Mrs. Fields. At Mrs. Fields. MRS. At Mrs. Fields. Uh, tweet uh, early. Tweet often. And uh, treat positively, and we will give out a signed JFK by the one and only Oliver Stone. Um, and if anything else happens to Oliver Stone, it was the CIA. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Uh, by the way, you know there's no such thing as conspiracy theory because he lives. So that's at 
Mrs. Fields. Now, from what I... Yeah, yeah, you could do a hashtag Ron and Fez. Hashtag Ron and Fez on that as well. Uh, tweet early, tweet often. One of you guys will pick and give this out to. But Anthony did one of these himself. Yeah, he, he did a little, he did a little do we lies. Ha- do we have that? Yeah. Mrs. Fields.com essentially offers the exact service, perhaps with a few less amazing aromas filling your house. But still... You get the point. Mrsfields.com. You could shop the world's best cookies and treats. That was hey, cool. by the way, just watching Fez do a bite of the lip. <laughs> it's cookies weird. Cookies move people, I guess. You know, Mrs. Fields, uh, a friend of mine, they got a kid in college, right? Forgot their birthday. And it was the following day. And... At like, I think it was like five o'clock in the afternoon, made a call, and this Mrs. Fields kind of giant birthday cookie showed up in the dorm with uh, candles on it and all. And I'm like, are we really at the point where you can get something sent across the country that quickly now? It's insane to me. And the kid was all happy and it reminded him of home. So um, let Mrs. Fields know that you enjoyed that. It's going to be hashtag Ron and Fez to keep that going because I think it's really great. I know it's a company, but I could just, I'm picturing an older lady who just <laughs> makes cookies and is nice. And then here's someone sobbing weirdly during the commercial. So that's all the first responders. Make sure you tweet over to Mrs. Fields, letting on that you uh, love. Uh, the Mrs. Fields cookies, and the sobbing, and make sure you put a hashtag Ron and Fez, and we'll give out a great prize. It's the 50th anniversary JFK Director's Cut Blu-ray, a giant set signed by Oliver Stone. Um, Bob, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, Ron, how are you doing? Uh, Good. Uh, Good. Hey, um, you know, I've loved your show over the years, um... Where can I find you on the replay on uh, your new channel? We haven't worked out any of the replay stuff, particularly since you can already do it through... On demand. On demand. So I don't know how this is all going to work out. Really, this didn't come together until last night. And I will also mention to everybody that Fez had... A very nice offer to go somewhere else that and write out his contract there. Um, a place that I thought would have been comfortable and fun for him. A job that would have been great. But he chose not to do it. He cut the safety net and wants to swing out there. And put it all on the table for April 2014. That's where, That's when I decided, all right. Let my contract be up then. It's completely different from Ronnie's now. And I'll get reviewed in April. All right. Um, Jermaine Lassier already wrote to Mrs. Fields. More ads for your delicious cookies on hashtag Ron and Fez, please. I'm crying to hear more. Get it? Oh, Fletcher, you're not going to win with your weirdness. Mrs. Fields gives fat, make have Fez happy with tears of joy. Mrs. Fields, don't knock a teary-eyed live read. My cat says cookie on command now. (laughs) They're not going to get any of this stuff. I'm on a low-carb diet, but that really made me want a cookie. (laughs) I like Aunt Flo reading your promos. Do you use a tear to salt your cookies? I won't ever forget that live read on hashtag Ron and Fez. That's a level of promotion you can't buy Oh, Dr. Intoxicated could be an early winner here. That's strong. Um, Cookie's so good, your cat will ask for them. Hashtag Ron and Fez. Or not. Mrs. Fields, your cookies move us all. Hashtag Ron and Fez. Bring back the host who weeps for your cookies. Hashtag Ron and Fez. Mm, Andrew, you have no chance of winning. Who needs milk? For now on, it's cookies and tears. Hashtags uh, Ron and Fez. That's from Anita Beer. Get it? Anita Beer? Mm. 
Cookie's so good, they'll make your cat talk. Hashtag Ron and Fez. <laughs> uh, emotionally uplifting uh, read from Fez. Oatmeal cookies made from real tears. Your bu uh, your peanut butter cookies make me weep with pleasure. Hashtag Ron and Fez. Queen Elizabeth, very, very strong there. God, that's funny. Um, Pepper must hate me. Didn't tell me about Oliver Stone going in. Then me didn't let me steal the signed Blu-ray. <laughs> Uh, I, I will tell you, this is from Eastside Dave. I will tell you even more. I just said, give me a prize. Fez ordered two Lamos. Brought up two Lamos. Even one I turned down two days ago. Uh, as saying, that's not what I'm looking for. And Hicks says, we have this. Yeah. I'm not kidding you, Dave. He tore the Christmas paper. This was your Christmas present from us. Um... Uh, this is Warren Chapman wrote to Mrs. Fields. New cookie idea, the old yellow. Hashtag Ron and Fez. I prefer my cookie, my holiday cookies topped with tears. Do any of your cookies say Skippy? Hashtag Ron and Fez. All right, some of these are funny, but you're not going to win. Ezra says, I hate cookies, but a Mrs. Fields commercial that had me, well, hungry for cookies, actually. Hashtag Ron and Fez. Love your new style of commercial. So touching and sentimental. That's so funny. Oh, these are great. So keep going. Your chance to win. This, by the way, would be the perfect uh, Christmas present. Because you're going to give out uh, something to somebody that they can't buy themselves. Signed Oliver Stone. I plan on giving this to my best friend, Eastside Dave, until his other best friend ripped it away from him. This is for the listeners. Uh, Phil in Jersey, you're on the Run of Fez show. How are you, Ron Fez? Hey, man. Hey, I just wanted to say, you know, I woke up this morning thinking we were going to get a totally different announcement. So I'm, I'm glad you guys are moving on to the next part of your, uh, your book here. And I want to recommend, uh, you know, recommend before you guys get over on the road, dog, a Kenny Rogers through the years montage. Um, you know what? That would be kind of that would be kind of cool. But Chris doesn't like to go into the archives. Uh, Snowy in Michigan, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, how you doing, guys? Great. Um, it's sort of really compliment Fez. It's taking a big chance doing that with your contract, man. There's a Stupid. old saying that fate favors the bold, not the bold maneuver, guy. Good luck to you, man. Good it, luck, Fez. It's, ab it's absolutely stupid what he did. And I, was, and I will say this, and it was Wiki in particular that was saying to me, when someone is willing to do something this dumb, how can you not believe in them? And I said, do you realize how dumb that statement is? You're asking me to say someone's doing something stupid. Isn't that great? But we're wide open here. We're all hopeful for the future. It's done now. <clears throat> and if I get mad at Fez now, I'll just keep going, what's that smoke, and make him do the nature boy until he dies. Um, a Benjamin, though, this is a good one. Writes to at Mrs. Fields, never before did I run home and make my wife listen to a commercial for cookies. Hashtag Ron and Fez. That's true. It's going to be a unique opportunity. Doug, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, guys. I just wanted to say congratulations. Um, also, too, if there's anything in the works of maybe a podcast in the future, sort of like ONA is doing with some of the really, really old bits, or is the lawyers got their hands on all that? You know, I, 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 you know, you're bringing up stuff, and I don't even know how important the podcasting stuff is, you know? Um, for me yeah. personally, I already listen to ONA, so it doesn't dawn on me to, to go to iTunes, but then I don't go to iTunes for anything but music. Some of this stuff we'll have to just figure out as we're going along. Some of these ideas might be good ideas or not so good ideas. Some, hopefully, we'll try and fail with some shit. Um, 
but I'm willing to do it if Chris Stanley wants to put on a waiter's jacket. And keep bringing his food and beverages. I'm not putting on a waiter's jacket. We don't know until we try it, Chris. <laughs> I'm willing to get served. Not doing it. Um, Justin, you're on the Run of Fez show. Oh, guys, great news. Great news. But like you said, the problem is the name of that stupid chat. How about this? Ron Dog Comedy. You get it? Mm-mm. No. Because Ron. Because like, you're Ron. And then Ron Dog. Uh, all right. Yeah, I no, I still don't get it. I don't get it at all. But, you know, there are no bad ideas. There are only great ideas, like this cool waiter's jacket thing with Chris Stanley. I don't even own one, so I don't know how that's going to happen. What do you have in yogurts right now? I just want a little None, something. zero. No yogurts. Mm. I have a cup of ice. Mm. Bad waiter. Um, JT, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ron. You know, I love the fact that Fez brought back the Nature Boy. That's just awesome. However, I think, to me at least, the funniest part of the whole thing was him tripping over the name of that new channel you guys got. It's, it's a long so new channel. Long. Raw Dog, Sirius XM, Comedy Hits, 99. We're going to be forced to say that so many times. <laughs> Uh, before it sounds natural. Sirius XM comedy hits 99, but first it's Raw Dog. Sirius XM comedy hits 99. That's got to be the longest name channel we have. Um, Mrs. Fields, do you have half cookies? Um, an early Christmas gift to myself. Hashtag Ron and Fez. Um, Mrs. Fields, Fez was sad and someone beat him to the last cookie. Hashtag Ron and Fez. Uh, to Mrs. Fields, uh, cookies could make you cry for Mrs. Fields. Um, all coming in. Let's go over to, um, Will. Will, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, I was, uh, congratulations. I'm really excited. And, uh, I was thinking, uh, you should bring back the old school, uh, comedy pyramids from the NEW days. Comedy pyramids are definitely, uh, on the line here. Mm, that's definitely going to be looked at. Uh, Jack in Maryland, you're on, the, uh, here's, uh, beer, beer in Michigan. You're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, uh, just uh, real glad to hear you guys are staying online, or, you know, on the radio. Online. Uh, my my first memory of the Ron and Fez show is hearing you talk about when Fez saw your sister-in-law breastfeeding in the restaurant. Oh, right yeah. Now. Oh, freaking awesome. How awful he acted. How just <laughs> oh, terrible thought. he was about that. Yeah, um, I, I just want to say that you guys are great, man. Thanks thank you so much. Phil and Augusta, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Hey, Phil. Oops, let me try one more time. Go ahead, Phil. Yeah, I'm right here. You got me? Yeah. Great. Hey, listen, I'm a new listener. I, I just turned on your show roughly month, month and a half ago, and I was hoping to get Fez to impress me. They kick me to laugh. I, I love to laugh. I, all I do is drive around and work, and I put the XM radio on pause and, and come back to hear you guys doing an interview or, or, or just yapping, and, and, I, and I love to laugh. If Fez can impress me, you'll keep me. If not... I don't know where I'm going to go. Well, geez, Phil, it's all on the fucking line, isn't it? If we miss Phil, the thick tonsilled man who loves the laugh. Likes the pause. Good good luck to us all. Chris, you're on the Run and Fez show. Hey, Ronnie, rename Raw Dog to Ron Bennington's got his own channel. I definitely, I don't want to come into the place saying I want to change the curtains, but Raw Dog Sirius XM Comedy Hits 99 is a mouthful. Now, we're going to be starting there January 6th, uh, 2014. It's going to be noon to 3, like the way we started on XM. We do the three-hour tour. Uh, when things are working, we'll stay a little longer. Um, we will uh, look into doing a million different things here, guys. I think it's going to be so much fun for all of us. And for the first time ever, we got a chance to spread out and try some of these ideas. And 
who knows? You can never really believe the bosses. But whenever I've said anything, all the bosses are saying, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Let's give it a try. Let's do this. Um, oh, I also would be crazy not to thank uh, two people. One being Steve Blatter, who helped us uh, move over from XM to Sirius when obviously we all thought, Oh, all right, all the XM guys are going to be out the door. But Rob Cross, on a daily basis, has been such a great friend to us. And just because uh, he's not going to be with the ONA channel and we're not going to be with the ONA channel, I don't think it should stop us from a daily get-together bitch about soccer, football, and music. I certainly hope we keep that doing. Rob Cross has been just uh, the best. Um, all right. Your chance to keep winning. We'll announce that uh, prize coming up on Monday for the Mrs. Fields Live Read. They were funny enough to bring up the fact that Fez cried during a live read. Uh, Shrek Love said, I'd like to buy a dozen cookies to celebrate my buddies. Hashtag Ron and Fez. Uh, moving on to bigger and better things. I'm calling at Mrs. Field. Oh, that Shrek Love could be a winner. That was a good one. Um, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun to do some of this stuff. Fezzy, you were a madman through this whole thing. I can't believe. Um, I, I will say this: if ever you are busted, convicted. And they want to put you in the electric chair. See if you can get Fez as your lawyer because he just kept battling the bosses over the last couple of days and then made a ridiculous compromise that I certainly hope uh, works out for them all. Fez, clean slate for you. Yeah. Uh, Chris Stanley, not a clean slate for you. We're going to go over... Some disciplinary things. What I do? You gave away your best friend's Christmas present. I didn't know. A listener now will have Eastside Dave's Christmas present. A lucky winner at Mrs. Fields. At Mrs. Fields uh, for the Twitter contest. Um, gosh, uh, I can't believe that we're throwing this into unmasked now but i do hope you give this one a listen this kid is such a great guy really really weird too um because bobby moynihan used to listen to ona and us before he went on saturday night live so that'll be brought up this is basically a guy who you that told me he used to go to the events and shit and then he got Saturday Night Live. So any of you guys that aren't getting Saturday Night Live, it's your fault. You're funny as Bobby Moynihan. You're just not pushing it. He's pushing it hard. Um, you're going to enjoy this um, unmasked, though. Bobby Moynihan uh, was one of those guys that came out of UCB and went to Saturday Night Live. And one of the reasons why he's one of my most favorite people is... He gets the fact how great it is to be on Saturday Night Live. Just like Fez, you saw Tom Rhodes came in here and no kidding around would said that he would do this show in a heartbeat. And he tours every great venue on the planet Earth. But he knows that how cool it would be to have a job here at Sirius XM uh, and wants to do it. That's how Bobby Moynihan feels about the Saturday Night Live. Am I thrown into a commercial or into the MS? Into a commercial. All right, so we're into a uh, spot here. But when we get back, it's Unmasked with Bobby Moynihan. Keep tweeting to at Mrs. Fields. That's at Mrs. Fields. Tell them how much you enjoyed Fez's live read. Hashtag it, Ron and Fez. And we'll make a lucky winner out of one of you. One of you is going to be a big lucky winner. Come in here next week, and we're all going to sit around and talk about the great stuff we're going to be doing on Sirius XM Comedy Hits, also known as Raw Dog. It's a Ron and Fez show. You're enjoying the Ron and Fez show on Sirius XM's Opie and Anthony channel. More in moments.